for it was created in 2011 to honor the life and memory of the great Jumper Hickson. Recipients of this prestigious award are horses of the highest exception, and this trophy is not necessarily awarded every year, only when it's warranted, and it can be awarded posthumously. The recipient of the Hickstead Trophy this year is Big Ben. legendary mount, Big Ben, remains a household name in Canada and around the world. Remembered for his incredible heart, boundless bravery, and captivating presence. A liver chestnut, Belgian, warm blood gelding, Big Ben was sired by Etrat. He was bred by, oh my god, Jacobs von Hoydonk of Belgium. Paul up here helping me with this. He was foaled in 1976. Despite having a dam who was just 15 hands high, I didn't know that, Big Ben grew to be 17-3. Many people believed he was too big to be a, a suitable show jumper. He was brought to the attention of Captain Canada in 1983 while he was visiting a longtime friend, a renowned show jumping writer, Neil Hendricks of the Netherlands. Miller stated that he had an indescribable good feeling about the huge gelding. For the first time, the very first time they met, soon after the Canadian Show Jumpers Unlimited, who we just heard about, the syndicate was formed and Big Ben was purchased for Ian. He was imported to Canada that same year. Big Ben and Miller went on to be the first ever horse rider comb combination to win two consecutive World Cup finals in 1988 and 1989. Big Ben was also Miller's mount for three Olympic Games, which is incredible, 84, 88, and 92. He also took home individual and team gold medals from the 87 Pan American Games. Big Ben was also represented, also represented Canada on more than 30 Nations Cup teams and racked up 40, over 40 Grand Prix wins throughout the decade-long career. This included the, the Du Maurier International Grand Prix, which was the richest Grand Prix in the world uh, that helped Big Ben to be the first horse in North America to win over a million and a half dollars in prize money. A true hero, Big Ben also overcame more than his share of adversity during his career. He faced two life-threatening colic surgeries and a major tractor-trailer accident, yet he persevered through all of these challenges, always coming back to international level competition in top form. In 1994, Big Ben retired from competition, but not before embarking on a final sentimental tour across Canada. He was well known for his positive, kind nature and was often seen greeting fans admirers from his stall at competitions, and sometimes even signing autographs with a hoof print. <laughs> in 1996, he became the second horse in history to be inducted into Canada's Sports Hall of Fame. After enjoying retirement at the Miller Brook Farm in Perth, Big Ben passed away at the age of 18 in 1999. He has since been immortalized in numerous ways. He is the subject of an official limited edition Canada Post stamp in 1999. His likeness has also been captured as a prior model horse. In 2005, the Perth and District Chamber of Commerce commissioned a bronze statue of Big Ben with Miller aboard, and that stands on display in downtown Perth today. Ian couldn't be with us today, but, for, but Faith will be accepting the award on his behalf. Please welcome Faith to the stage. He really felt that he was an incredible athlete. He 
had a brilliant mind, which some horses do have, and that he had a heart so big that it carried him to so many victories. Uh, Ian said that he could always have to be totally correct in what he did in his training with Big Ben, because Big Ben never forgot. And if he didn't do it right, you couldn't undo it. So that was a really big uh, process of the training of Big Ben. And Ian uh, also talked in his letter to me about the misfortunes along the way, the terrible, terrible crash going out to Spruce Meadows. And I'll never, ever forget being in Bronzo and the telephone rang about five in the morning and it was Ian shaken, saying, there's been a terrible crash. Luckily, Big Ben was unscathed and he went on to compete in Spruce Meadows that week and most of the horses were fine. There were a few casualties. Not deaths, but really uh, life threatening situations. But Ben did have his rough spots, the colic surgeries, uh, but he seemed to rebound. And it was very, very hard to retire because when the van would go out of the yard, Ben would pace because he wanted to be there too. And when he had his final colic and we had to put, the, put him down, it was a very, very sad thing for Ian and the country. And Ian also wanted to say that he was very, very proud that Big Ben could remain a Canadian horse. There were times when we were offered significant money in those days, but there wasn't even any discussion in the syndicate. He was not for sale. And Ian is so proud that he broke him from Canada all those wonderful years. You know his victories and how he did, but the other few little pieces of, of fun history of Ben I want to tell you about. When he died, he died just before Christmas. And three days before Christmas, Ian had a memorial party for Big Ben. And Bill and I drove down from Toronto, and as we entered Millerbrook, the dark of the evening, on a little rise of the hill, there was the most beautiful horseshoe made of burning logs. And that is where Ben is buried. And the village and many people turned out to, to say goodbye to Big Ben. And a local choir sang, you're the wings beneath my feet. And it was very, very emotional. We gathered in the arena afterwards and it was a celebration of a great life. The other <coughs> great occasion for Big Ben, in his memory, was a <coughs> Millerbrook day for Ben. And people came from all over the country, but also the local people, because Perth was so proud of Big Ben still is so proud of Ian. And we gathered at Millerbrook for the morning and had a wonderful display of jumping, mostly the Miller family, and also some dressage with Tina. And then we all went into Perth and the beautiful stat uh, statue of Big Ben was unveiled. But the emotional pitch was when the, the mountains <coughs> with about six or eight black horses in their full dress uniform came down the, the hill towards that lovely park. Because, you see, Big Ben was a honorary member of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Oh. That was very <laughs> And we gathered that evening in the little inn across of the park, and we gave the last toast to Big Ben. But I have to mention a person that was so involved with Big Ben's career, and you wouldn't hear a lot about her because you knew she was always there and she was so quiet. But Lynn Miller, who was Ian's wife, and who we'll never forget, was the grounds person who had helped Ian develop Big Ben and stood by Ian's side with the great victories, but also when there were disappointments. And we also remember Lynn tonight because she was so much a part of the Big Ben team. Thank you.